we're going to look at today a Roman Catholic heresy of their dogma of tradition which the Bible says to their tradition is a lie but they teach that their tradition is true whereas the Bible has a total opposite of their teaching and their teaching is that Mary was sinless and they call it the Immaculate Conception which would be the freedom or being free of the original sin from her conception so Mary according to the tradition of the Catholic Church <clears throat> Excuse me. At her conception by her mother and her father, which they say is Anna. I don't know where they get that from. Mary was in the womb of her mother and never sinned a day of her life and never had the charge of the original sin. It was adopted by Pope Pius <laughs> the ninth. 1854 and if you reject what we're looking at right now which I do reject and I was a I was a member of the st. Mary star to see Roman Catholic Church in New London Connecticut and I came out of the Catholic Church April 21st 1987 and got saved the Catholic Church says if you don't agree with them, you are a you are in heresy, you are a heretic, you are an anathema. And I say if you go against the Bible and teach traditions that don't teach what the Bible says, you are the one in deception, not the Bible believer. She has the freedom from original sin. And personal sin established by the Council of Trent so the Council of Trent and Pope Pius IX has conceived in their wicked hearts by Satan whispering into their ear that Mary the mother of Jesus herself like Jesus was sinless and that's bunk and we're going to look at what the Bible has to say so <clears throat> excuse me allergies we're going to look at the word in scripture from Exodus 29 14 and we want to see but the flesh of the bullock and his skin and his dung shalt thou burn with fire without the camp Jesus Christ died without the camp he didn't die in Jerusalem he died outside of Jerusalem it is a sin offering so let's look at the sin offering very first that's the first time the sin offering shows up. Exodus 29 14. And it is a reference that would be pointing us to what Hebrews says dying outside the camp, Jesus Christ. So when we come over here of Smith Bible Dictionary. I know on Facebook you can't see it, but on the video, the sin offering among Jews was a sacrifice. In which the ideas appropriation and atonement for sin okay the ceremonial sin offering described in Leviticus 4 and 6 sin offering is someone who has sinned and trespassed against God and the very first reference in the King James Bible, I'm King James only, brings us to Jesus Christ suffering for sin outside of Jerusalem, outside the camp. <clears throat> now, 
Exodus 30. Exodus chapter 30, verse 10. And Aaron, that's the high priest. Aaron shall make atonement upon atonement upon the horns, that be the horns of the brazen altar, of it once in a year with the blood of the sin offering of atonement. Once in a year shall he make an atonement upon it. Throughout your generation it is most holy unto the Lord. This is the day of atonement. Once a year, twice, the high priest would go into the most holy of holies, once for his sin, and then for the sin of all the people. And when we find sin offering, the second place in the Bible, we find blood, and we find atonement. Interesting word. Leviticus. Leviticus. Chapter 4. Leviticus 4 3. If the priest that is anointed, he's in the service of God. Jesus Christ, Christ means anointed. Do sin. Now, Jesus Christ never sinned. To the sin of the people. Then let him bring for his sin, which he has sinned, a young bullock without blemish unto the Lord for his sin offering. So if the priests, the people who are the, the intimators, intimators between the Jewish people and God, if the priests were to sin, and they do sin, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, they also were to bring a bullock for their sin, Leviticus 4.3, for a sin offering. And we read previously, atonement and blood. And then the first place we saw it was Jesus Christ dying outside the gates of Jerusalem. Chapter 5. Verse 6. And he shall bring his trespass offering, Leviticus 5, 6, unto the Lord for his sin, which he has sinned. Female of the flock, a lamb of lamb, a lamb, the lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Or a kid of goats for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement concerning his sin. So sin offering is somebody who has sinned with a word to atonement of blood, of a reference to Jesus Christ dying outside the city gates of Jerusalem for people that have sinned. You've gotten these words together because they're important. Now, Leviticus 12. Let's read Leviticus 12 and we'll come back. 12, the number of Israel. 12 tribes of Israel. Leviticus 12. Mary was Jewish. She wasn't Catholic. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, The law. Moses is the law. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man child, she shall be unclean seven days, according to the days of the separation of of her infirmity shall she be unclean. In the eighth day the flesh of his of the foreskin shall be circumcised. She shall she shall then continue in the blood of the purifying three and thirty days. She shall touch no hollow thing nor come in the sanctuary until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. But if she bear a maid child, a female child, then she shall be unclean two weeks. In her separation, she shall come in the blood of her purifying threescore and six days. And when the days of her purifying are fulfilled for a son 
or for a daughter. She shall bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, and a young pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offering. Unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, unto the priest. Who shall offer it before the Lord and make an atonement for her. And she shall be cleansed from the issue of her blood. This is the law of her that has born a male or a female. There's no other sexes. There's only male or female. If you think there's other than a male or female, you're stupid and you need to get out of society. If she be not able to bring a lamb, then she shall bring two turtles, or two turtle doves, or two young pigeons, one for a burnt offering, the other for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for her, and she shall be clean. Alright, well, let's break down Leviticus 12. Alright. So, Moses the law writer, prescribed by God. Speak unto the children of Israel, Jewish people. If a woman marries a woman, shall conceive seed. She conceives seed. Now, not of a male, the virgin birth, but that holy thing was of the Holy Spirit. And then later on, to defile the traditions of the Catholic Church, Mary did have sons and daughters. She wasn't a perpetual virgin. Another lie, the Catholic Church. And born a man-child, Jesus Christ was a man-child. She shall be unclean. Set apart. Unclean. Not clean, unclean. Seven days. According to the days of her separation. For her infirmity. She shall be unclean. For the very fact is she that woman, any woman that got pregnant and had a male child, she is unclean. The eighth day, this is all important, we're gonna look at it in one. the eighth day, the flesh of his, the child, shall be circumcised. She shall then continue in the blood of her purifying. You wouldn't need to be purified if you weren't unclean. Three and thirty days. She, she shall touch no hollow thing. Nor come into the sanctuary. Unto the days of her purifying being unclean, be fulfilled. Well, she bear a maid child, which she would later. And she shall be unclean two weeks, as in her separation. She shall continue in the blood of her purifying. Because you're unclean. You wouldn't need purifying if you were unclean. You would not need hand sanitizer if your hands were clean. And when the days of her purifying, Leviticus 12, 6, are fulfilled, fulfilled for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, and a young pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offering, Unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, unto the priest. See all the words we looked up in Exodus and Leviticus? They match Leviticus 12. Who shall offer it before the Lord to make an atonement for her. She shall be cleansed from the issue of her blood. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to, to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is the law for her that has born a male or a female. 
and she be not able to bring a lamb, then she shall bring two turtle, two turtle doves, or two young pigeons, the one for a burnt offering, the other for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement, and she shall be clean. Okay? 12.8 is a very important verse. Gospel of Luke. Luke is a medical doctor. Luke 2. Luke is a medical doctor. Luke 2.21 And when the eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child We read about that in Leviticus 12 His name was called Jesus which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in her womb now look how the Holy Spirit put in Luke 2.21 the conception of Jesus in the womb. So when we go back to Leviticus chapter 12, it fits hand in hand. There is no other way out of it unless you're a Pope Pius who doesn't believe the Bible and the Council of Trent, you rather have dogmas. Well, you know what dogmas are? They're a bitch. That's what a dogma is. A female dog is a bitch. Dogma. Dogs are unclean animals. That's just as bad as the Pope when he says something important. They call it bull. Yes, I do too. I call it bull too. Not their bull. There is another word that I would not use. For the bull that the Pope speaks. Mr. Pius. Luke 2.22 And when the days of her purification. Leviticus 12. According to the law of Moses. Leviticus 12.8 Were accomplished. Leviticus 12. They brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Luke 2.23, as is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. It's quite interesting because the Bible says she shall touch no holy thing. I was wondering, I, I can't prove this, but I was wondering why she was unclean from her separation. Was the mother allowed to hold a, a male child? For the first year. Because the Bible says it's holy and Jesus was holy. To offer sacrifice, 224, according to that which is said in the law, Leviticus 12, of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves. Or two young pigeons. So let's go back. That's what Mary brought. Leviticus 12.8 If she be not able to bring a lamb. She had the lamb. She had the lamb which take away the sin of the world. But I don't know if she could hold them. Their very first born male and Jesus were holy. She was clean, unclean from her separation. If she be not able to bring a lamb, then she shall bring two turtles or two young pigeons. Alright? Stop there. Luke chapter 2 24 to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Okay, that's what she brought. 
If she be not able to bring a lamb, then she shall bring two turtles or two young pigeons, the one for a burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. You tell the Pope to go swim in the lake of fire forever for his lies. Mary and the Bible and the Holy Spirit says that what she brought was for a sin offering. To the hell with the Roman Catholic Church and their false dogmas, their false teachings, and their heresies. Because the Bible says Mary was a sinner. She brought the offering of a sinner. And Mary herself professed to be a sinner because she brought the offering of a burnt offering and a sin offering in Luke chapter 2. Thank God I came out of the Catholic Church April 21st, 1987. That's it. That's the scripture. And it rises above any council. It rises above any, any pope. And by the way, the priests that we're reading about in the Bible are not the Catholic priests. These were of the, the family of Aaron, Jewish, not Gentile. You got to rightly divide the word of truth. Now, let's look at some other scripture here. A little side note. Matthew 13. I hope that's 55. My writing's terrible. Matthew 13, 55. Is not this the carpenter's son? No, it's not. He's not the carpenter's son. He's not Joseph's son. He's the Son of God. Is not his mother called Mary? Yes, she is. And his brethren, his brothers, James, Joseph, Simeon, and Judas, and his sisters. We're going to look at some more. But Mary had other children. Mary had Jesus. And in Leviticus chapter 12 says that a woman who has conceived seed, male or female, Jesus and his brothers and his sisters, she was unclean to the plop. And the lake of fire goes the Catholic popes and the Catholic church and their false doctrine. We'll read on. Mark 6. Mark 6. Is not this the carpenter? Nope. The son of Mary? Yep. The brother of James, Joseph, Judah, Simeon, are not his sisters here with us? She had other children. She was not a perpetual virgin. By the way, if Mary did not have any other children and was married to Joseph, she sinned against the marriage bed of her husband. It's a sin in the Bible for a woman to withhold herself to her husband. Okay. Luke, the medical doctor, chapter 1. Now let's see what Mary had to say. Luke 147. Mary, you want to speak to us, please? Mary speaking, verse 46, Luke 1, 46. Mary said, my soul does magnify the Lord. Not the Pope, not the church. And my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. Well, that's interesting because let's click on Savior. And I forget which one I wanted here. There we go. Easton Bible Dictionary. One who saves from a form or degree of evil. 
Mary says, God, my Savior, and she's saying, you know what? My Savior saves me from the evil, from the sin that I do. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Mary's actions show that she's a sinner. Mary's words show that she's a sinner. But the Catholic Church don't know how to read their Bible, don't know how to study their Bible. So let's pick back up in Leviticus chapter 12, verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel, if a woman hath conceived seed, Jesus, James, Simon, Judas, I forget the other son's names, and girls, and born a man-child, then she shall be unclean seven days. She bore other male children, she's unclean. According to the days of her separation, for her infirmity, she shall be unclean. That's what the Bible says. That's what the medical doctor says. And the eight days of the flesh of his the flesh of his the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. We read that in Luke. She shall then continue in the blood. Of her purifying three and thirty days. After the afterbirth and after the pregnancy, a woman still bleeds. That woman that came to Jesus having the infirmity of bleeding for twelve years. When she touched the hem of Jesus, she was an unclean woman touching the clean Jesus. And he cleansed her. That woman who bled for 12 years, no man could lie with her. No man could sit in her chair. No man could use her saddle. No man. They're clean. Mary having sons and daughters. Leviticus 12, 4. And she shall continue the blood of her purifying. You wouldn't need purifying. You wouldn't need Perel. You wouldn't need hand sanitizer. She shall touch no hollow thing. Now remember, Luke said that the male that breaks the matrix shall be called holy. And we know that Jesus is holy. I gotta wonder if a firstborn male. And then Jesus Christ himself, I wonder if the mothers were allowed to hold those babies for this period of time. Nor come in the sanctuary until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. But if she bear a ma maid child, which she did, she shall be unclean two weeks, unclean, 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 as in her separation. She shall continue in the blood of her purifying three score and six days. And when the days of her purifying are fulfilled for a son, Jesus and his brothers, or for a daughter, Jesus' sisters, she shall bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering. She didn't have enough. She was poor. Which is another error of the Catholic Church because they dress Mary and Joseph in rich clothing, making them rich. She couldn't afford the land. She had to bring the birds because she wasn't rich. A young pigeon, a turtle dove, for a sin offering. Unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, unto the priest. This is exactly what Mary did, but she didn't bring a lamb. She couldn't afford a lamb. Who shall offer it before the Lord and make an atonement for her? Atonement, atonement, atonement. And she shall be cleansed of the issue of her blood 
This is the law, Luke chapter 2, for her that has born a male or a female. Mary did. If she be not able to bring a lamb, okay, here we go, here's Luke chapter 2, then she shall bring two turtles, turtle, two turtle doves, or two young pigeons, one for a burnt offering, and there it is, the other for a sin offering. Mary showing up that day with the pigeons or the two turtle doves, she's announcing to the nation of Israel, I am a sinner. And don't believe the Roman Catholic Church. One, two, three, four more places, we're done. Matthew. Matthew 16. I got up here on the screen. Matthew 16, 12. Then understood they how that he begged them not to be where the leaven of bread. But the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. I tell you, beware of the doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church. Beware. The, 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 the Pharisees and Sadducees were, and, the, and the Catholic Church hierarchy are almost one and the same. Matthew 15, verse 3. But he answered, Senator, why do ye also transgress the commandment of God? By your tradition, or dogmas, or counsels. And in Mark 7, 9, he said to him, Full well you reject the commandment of God. That you may keep your own tradition. You throw the Bible away to keep what your dopey popey said. That's why the Catholic Church does not want its people to read the Bible. Because if a Catholic were read the Bible, he would see the errors of the Catholic Church. Mark 7, 13, making the word of God none effect through your tradition. We looked at the word of God. We looked at Exodus, Leviticus. Luke. And we compared what the Bible said about Mary and then what the Catholic Church said about Mary, what Leviticus says about Mary, what Luke says about Mary, what Exodus says about Mary, what the Holy Spirit says about Mary through the Word of God. And then we looked at what Pope Pius and the Council of Trent. I'm here to tell you that Pope Pius and the Council of Trent and the Catholic Church and their traditions are dead wrong. Beware. Beware of the Catholic Church. Come and know Jesus Christ. Now, I am not attacking the Catholics. There are saved Catholics in the Catholic Church. I am talking about the system. The doctrine, the traditions, the hierarchy of the Roman Catholic Church. There are there are Roman Catholics, there are Catholics in the world that completely agree with what I just preached and taught you. And there's several reasons why they won't come out of the church. That's not today's lesson. 